Hi there, welcome to today's second 10 minute moan and the topic of this second 10 minute moan is the story about the jihadi GP who was exposed as a leader of the banned extremist group Hizb at Tahir is cleared by the NHS to go back to work. Now, this story was only covered in two outlets in the UK, a lot of coverage in uh, Middle Eastern um, outlets to be fair. And I think it was only the Times and the Mail that ran with it, and I missed it. So, I'm going to cover it. Some of you might have heard it. To a lot, probably like me, I only heard about it tonight. So, the story goes, a GP suspended after the Mail on Sunday exposed him as a leader of a banned extremist group has been cleared to return to work. Abdul Wahid, 55, was a leader of Hizb ut Tahrir which called for jihad on the streets of London days after Hamas terror attack on Israel last October. The extremist chief himself praised the attack as a welcome punch in the nose for Israel. But a week after the march, the Mail on Sunday uncovered Wahid's identity, revealing how he had been practising as a GP for more than 20 years under his real name, Wahid Azif Shayada. Patients at suburban surgery in the northwest London had no idea of his double life as, as a UK head of global extremist group. Where are we? Move down here. Sorry, loads of pictures. Just scanning down. NHS England suspended Wahid and, in January, the then Home Secretary, James Cleverly, prescribed Hibs Ut Tahrir as a terror group, making membership punishable with a jail term of up to 14 years. However, an NHS England panel has now cleared him to return to work following an investigation into his alleged conduct. An NHS London spokeswoman, sorry, spokesman said, we take our issues relating to professional conduct seriously and have procedures in place to make sure that individuals are fit to work in the NHS. Following a thorough investigation, the evidence regarding Dr Shaida's conduct and practice was considered by NHS England panel at an oral hearing on the 11th of July in accordance with regulations and published policy. No evidence was found that he had an involvement with Hibs Ur Tahrir since the organisation was prescribed. The panel found there was insufficient evidence to warrant removing Dr Shaida from the performer's list, but decided that conditions should be imposed to manage a safe return to the practice for both staff and patients. Dr Shaida is therefore able to return to the practice subject to those conditions which the spokesman described as confidential. I wonder if these are to protect the good doctor or the good doctor's patients, these confidential security agreements. A separate probe by the General Medical Council which regulates doctors is believed to be ongoing. Wahid raised £51,981 on the website Crowd Justice to fight his suspension. He was suspended for his work. He eventually got to hearing. It was a one-day hearing and he's raised £51,981 for that. Well done, Dr. Shaida. On his fundraising page, he described his past as leader of Hibs Ut Tahirir as a political activity. Within hours of the October 7 attacks, this is a very interesting bit, Wahid told a podcast that Hamas terrorists were brave Mujahideen who gave the enemy a very welcome punch to the nose. Days later, he led marches outside Egyptian and Turkish embassies in London where Hibs Ur Tahrir members demanded an invasion to rescue Palestinians. When a speaker shouted, what's the solution to liberate people in the concentration camp called Palestine? The crowd shouted back, Jihad, Jihad, Jihad. Wahid told the crowd, victory is coming and everyone has to choose a side. Whose side are you going to be on? Asked the doctor. A GMC spokesman said, we are fully aware of the concerns that have been raised regarding Dr. Wahid Azif Shahid and are looking into this. We thoroughly investigate concerns that suggest patient safety or the public's confidence in doctors may be at risk, and we take action when it's necessary. 
There you go. So this is a doctor standing in the middle of the UK talking about jihad at a protest and he's told everybody available victory is coming and everyone is to choose a side. Whose side are you going to be on? How does that man treat someone who turns up at his surgery to get his health sorted if he's not on that man's side of this jihad that, he de that he's demanding victories coming and everybody must choose a side? How does that work? How can you possibly have a doctor in the United Kingdom who is on camera saying these things, giving these threats, looking after the health of anybody in the UK when he's already told us everyone has to choose a side? So if my side's not the same as his side and he's treating my illness, how could I possibly expect him who's in this crowd shouting jihad, 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 how can I possibly expect this man to have my health at the forefront of his mind when we're evidently on two different sides of this? I'm certainly not on his side, standing in the streets of England shouting jihad, jihad, jihad. How does that work? How does it work? Someone standing in the streets, or sorry, not standing in the streets, on a podcast Telling everybody that the October 7 attacks, the people that done it, the Hamas terrorists that done that, were brave Mujahideen. How do we have a doctor that, that, that we all seen these horrific videos, we all seen these horrific scenes from the 7th of October? How can we have anybody in a public situation telling us that that was a very welcome punch in the nose for Israel? Is there a terror attack we're talking about? The United Kingdom really has to stand up for not only the United Kingdom, but its people. And this man, being a doctor, who paid a lot of money to be a doctor, is they standing up for the British people? This man should be allowed to serve, medically serve, only the people that he's told us that are on his side. People that want to stand in the streets and shout jihad, jihad, jihad. That's his side. It's impossible for you to work as a doctor in the United Kingdom when you can only look at the medical um, concerns of people in his side. And this is the sort of stuff that can blow up when people I'll tell you what happens right it's even the majority feel as if they're being persecuted in their own country that's how you end up having civil unrest any nation that's suffered horrific civil unrest I'd imagine a vast majority have been when the majority feel as if they've been persecuted in their own country and when we keep having things like this, we keep having um, soldiers stabbed in the streets, almost killed in the streets, and being told that it wasn't a terror thing, it was just a man with mental health problems. It kind of doesn't help. When we have our care system having to go and react to situations with vulnerable children and get threatened and nearly assaulted in the streets, and once they've left with children in danger because he's havoc in an area, riots, turning over police cars, burning buses. The people of this country feel unsafe in their own country. And when you keep doing it, when you keep doing it, when you keep doing it, unfortunately, the pressure gets built up, built up, built up, built up. And when the pressure and the pressure cooker gets more than the valve can contain, we have problems. So please, the people that make the big decisions in this country, please start considering the people of this country first and foremost, just once or twice. It would be really nice. Thank you. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please 
consider subscribing and hitting the notifications bell. But most importantly of all, unless you're the type of doctor that wants to shout jihad, jihad in our streets and tell us that victory is coming and we all must pick a side. Unless you're people like that, everyone else, have a great day. Cheerio bye now. Thank you.